Hey guys, welcome. I'm Christian Acosta. Now here we're going to be taking a look at some of the most shocking and impactful criminal cases that happen in Hollywood. And to kick off, you know, the story behind the story, we have Maria Celeste Arradas joining us today, our first guest, you know, to premiere all of this. What a way to kick off. <laughs> I mean, majorly, majorly. Now the reason that you're here today uh, is because we're going to be talking about El Secreto de Selena. Uh, you know, it's your the book that you've written and the investigation behind that. And everything that happened in her life in the months previous to her death that were so important and fundamental to understanding why she was killed. Correct. Now, truthfully, you know, some people may be looking at it like, what does Maria Celeste have to do with this, right? <laughs> oh so I, I think it's important that we take a look, you know, before we get into all of that, right? First off, you're a TV icon, right? You're a living legend. I mean, of news, uh, Spanish language television. Look, I work in, in television and I admire you. If I Thank you. achieve 10% of what you've achieved, I'd be content. I really did my homework in this case. I spent months and months reading mountains of court documents, which nobody wants to do that. But if you want to really excel in something and really get acquainted with an issue, you have to really do your homework. And, um, and I studied everything that was in those court documents, which I found a lot of things that nobody ever knew about because nobody likes to read. And I also spoke to the, the district attorneys. I spoke to the uh, state attorneys. I spoke to uh, the uh, attorneys for the defense, uh, eyewitnesses, jurors, uh, people that were close to Selena, the murderer, of course, and her father, because he liked the interview and he wanted to kind of throw light on things that she had said and clarify them. And, and he, he did a great interview. So, so bottom line is things. you did your homework. I did. Right. I did. I, was, I became like a library rat reading all this. And, and I was also doing the entire trial, interviewing detectives, policemen, everybody that had anything to do with this case. And it was in that manner that I was able to put together the pieces of, it, of this very complicated puzzle. Because originally everybody thought this was a black and white issue. But it was really more complex. Absolutely. Now, you, again, as I've mentioned, are an icon of, of television. You have a career that spans decades, right? We, Of course, we all know you're from Telemundo's Al Rojo Vivo. Yeah, this is like almost like a little after the beginning of your career, we could say. A little say, bit after. Right? Little yeah, bit it after. was like in the early, be early, early beginnings. Early stages, right? I, like I phases. Already, I was already established. I already had a very, uh, Big time. very um, successful TV show. Right. And it was doing great. And it was seen in 15 Latin American countries and in the U.S. coast to coast. And it was one of the top shows. But I wanted to do something that really showed the world that I was a real journalist, journalist a, a serious journalist. Because we, you know, we used to have a, a show in which we had a, a translucent table, always with miniskirts crossing the legs. And I didn't want to be like a, like a bimbo reading out of a teleprompter, right. nothing further from the truth. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show that I had a brain and, and that I was very prepared to do something serious. And this was a great opportunity. This was it. This was it. Gotcha. So what, what do you think led you up to that? Like what qualities did you feel like you had that set you up for this moment? The first one was coincidence. I was in the right place at the right time, even though it was the wrong time for, for our beloved Selena. Right. Uh, when she was uh, shot, I was in the newsroom, and that day I had gone earlier. So nobody else, none of the other anchors that work along with me in the network were present. It was just me. So when they say that she was shot in the newsroom, I was the first one to go and sit down and, and give the news. And then I came back again uh, shortly after to give another news brief. And while I was talking about what we knew up till then, through the IFB, my producer said she's dead. Right. So I had to li literally live say the news that was so impactful. Now, on our next episode, we're going to dive deeper into that because I want to go into that okay. majorly and, you know, discuss what exactly happened, what was going on through it your head. It was an unforgettable right? day. Absolutely. Uh, going back to this investigation, I've actually seen some interviews, right, that you've done, and people have asked you, like, what, why, why are you writing about Selena's death? And, you, you know, your example is, well, you know, journalists write about, you know, uh, figures, like, for example, John F. Kennedy, right? Yeah. But there's always an... Oh, so an, many more. Of course, James so Dean, many. James Dean, Marilyn yes. Monroe, Abraham Lincoln, everybody. Absolutely. Maybe yeah. one day people will write about me, who knows? Oh, well, hopefully for the right reasons. We want to get killed <laughs> no, no, because we're mentioning all. all the ones that have died. We won't go there yet, right? <laughs> but there, there is always a, a connection or something yeah. that sort of uh, just, just drives you towards that figure, towards that person, towards that story. What was it about Selena that you said, my God, I've got to look further into this and, you know, in the future, write a book? Well, what, what, what I saw in the story was that it was so existentialist in the sense that everybody uh, has a goal, everybody has dreams, and we all fight for them, and we all work hard to achieve them. But if we make the wrong decision at any point, we might be derailed 
from that road, and in this case, fatally, like Selena uh, saw her end, uh, because she made the wrong decision. She trusted Yolanda Saldivar, even though people that were very close to her for a long time had been telling her that this woman was no good news, that she was bad news. And even when her inner voice was telling her already that she should get rid of her because she was a toxic friend, and right. she didn't do it. So this story had such a lesson for all of us that we have to not only always pursue our dreams and work hard, but also be very careful about the decisions that we make because just one will turn everything around. Absolutely. Now, there's been other cases of, of I guess, intrigue and shock and impact, right? We've had Jane Rivera, Valentina Elizalde, uh, Kevin Frett, you know, right, this right, past year. Course. Why haven't you looked into those in the same way? Like, what stood out about the Selena case? Well, they're very different. First of all, the times are different. Back then, this is many, many years ago, a quarter of a century ago. Can you um, believe it's been that it's, long? No, I can hardly. It's going to be 25 years. Isn't that crazy? No, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. But um, w what happened in this case is that back then, the news organizations had more resources. So as a journalist, you could have more time to dedicate to something. Now, you know, there have been so many cuts in the media in general, in every single uh, news organization, that you don't have time to dedicate to go in depth. Very few uh, newspapers can do it, but when you're in the news, uh, in, in a TV show that has so many pieces of information a day, you you report, 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 and then you move to move on to the next one. Right. You don't have the luxury that I had back then to dedicate uh, my time for that case. I think that's a shame. It's a it's a big shame. Right. But some people are still being able to do it. I particularly couldn't do it. You're also boss now, no? I know that's right. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> in this case, executive producer of the miniseries. There you go. Exactly. Which is really, really something I wanted to do because. For me, it was important, number one, to make sure that everything that I investigated so thoroughly and that I dedicated so much time to was not um, convoluted or was not changed or distorted. That was very important to me because I wanted it to be a factual piece of work. So this book is that. That's why it's, it's never been the object of a lawsuit. Right. And the miniseries that it's based on as well. But I also wanted to make sure that as an executive producer, I, had a, I could care for every detail to make sure that Selena's memory was respected that nothing was said or done that would throw not even the most minimum uh, shadow of, of a doubt over right. her reputation. Right. Now, throughout this investigation, what would you say is the biggest misconception about oh the case? Oh, my God, I can tell you that right away. Uh, well, about my book in particular, the biggest misconception is that people say that this was Yolanda Saldivar's uh, version. And it's not. It it's really not. isn't. I, I would be nuts, crazy to right. do uh, a work uh, whether well, there is a book or a miniseries based on the on the testimony of a murderer, right. convicted, convicted murderer, murderer. exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that has nothing to do with it. And the other misconception is that this was a, a very simple case. Like I mentioned before, this was not black and white. This was a very complex case. It was like a like a real life t TV novella, you know. But you know, without having to 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 add anything to it, it had it by itself. When you were doing your research, did you have any moments where you said, you know, those eureka moments, right, where you say oh my gosh, I found this. You know, when you see, yes, when you yes. see the, the television programs and the movies and you see, my gosh, I found this, right? Did you, did you have that moment at all? I had many moments like that, that I found notes that the uh, negotiators had been exchanging while Yolanda Saldivar was in the, in the, um, in the truck um, saying that she was going to kill herself. This is basically hours after she killed Selena and she's been surrounded by the policeman and she doesn't want to give herself up. So there were negotiating with her, but while they were negotiating in the microphones, they were writing each other's notes on things that she was saying. So then, of course, in the miniseries and the book, you, you realize what that's all about. Mm, interesting. All right, well, I think we're going to move on to that next part, right, okay. where we're going to be discussing the day of, right, the day when you found oh out God. when this, all of this was going down. And, you know, we're, we're going to get to that on our next episode for that sure. That was a tough here. day. Of course, yeah. We're going to be discussing that here with Maria Celeste Arraras. Man, this is a good way to kick it off. Yeah. <laughs> Bueno, y si ustedes todavía no se han suscrito, se dice suscrito, suscríbanse. Suscríbanse. Acá se los juro que nos van a querer a todos, ¿verdad, Cristian? Sí, la verdad que nosotros pasamos súper bien y ustedes ya con nosotros aún más. Podemos ser amigos. Suscríbanse. Suscríbanse.